Welcome back, fellow scientists! It's Justin again. I am so excited for today's- Did you hear that? Okay. Uh, anyways, by the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to- What is that? Oh. I guess I'm a little late for lunch. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a snack to settle my stomach. But first, by the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to explain the functions of the digestive system and identify its key parts. Let's get into it and grab that snack. Just like how a car needs fuel or your phone needs a charged battery, we humans need food to keep all of the body systems we've learned about running smoothly. So, how does our body turn the food we eat into nutrients we can actually use? You guessed it, the digestive system. The digestive system has two main functions, digestion, or breaking food down into smaller pieces, and absorption of the nutrients from the food into the bloodstream. Each part of the digestive system plays an important role in completing one of these two functions. Which body part do you think is at the beginning of the digestive system? Yeah, the mouth is the entry to the digestive system. And while getting food into our bodies is a pretty important step, what goes on in there when I take a bite of my snack plays a key role in digestion as well. Food is digested in two ways, physically, or manually breaking it apart, and chemically, dissolving it with acids. What is happening in the mouth to digest foods physically? Chew, got it. When we use our teeth to chew food, the food is being physically broken down into smaller pieces beginning the process of digestion. Nice thinking. How about chemical digestion? Do you think any of that is happening in the mouth? While most chemical digestion happens later on in the system with fluids like stomach acid, chemical digestion actually starts in the mouth as well. As we chew, our saliva mixes with the food and begins to dissolve it. Saliva also makes food a lot easier to swallow, which is the next step along the path of the digestive system. <laughs> when you swallow your food, it travels down the esophagus, the tube that connects your mouth to your stomach. Involuntary muscles in the esophagus push the food along until it reaches the stomach. Now, if you're anything like me, the stomach can be the most dramatic organ of the digestive system. Have you ever observed motions or sounds coming from your stomach? Based on these observations, how do you think your stomach helps to digest food? Record your thoughts in your guided notes. The sounds and movements you might have observed are one of the ways the stomach digests food physically. Involuntary muscles cause the stomach to contract and relax, churning up the food inside, kind of like the clothes in a washing machine. As the food is being tumbled, it's also being digested chemically. Inside the stomach are extremely strong acids, often called stomach acid, that dissolve and break down the food. After a few hours in the stomach, the partially digested food moves into the small intestine. Fluids from the pancreas and gallbladder fill the small intestine to finish breaking down the food. Now the food particles are finally tiny enough that their nutrients can be absorbed. Now, I know I might not sound like it because of its name, but the small intestine is actually the longest organ in the body. It's about 22 feet long. That's longer than the height of a giraffe. What benefit might there be for the small intestine to be super long? Record your thoughts in your guided notes. Its long length gives the small intestine plenty of time to absorb all the nutrients from the broken down food. These nutrients include carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and vitamins, all the things your cells need to grow and perform their jobs. 
Similarly to how oxygen passes through the tissue of the lungs to enter the bloodstream, these nutrients pass through the walls of the small intestine to enter the blood. From there, they can be delivered to all the cells of the body. But not every part of what we eat is something our body can absorb. The parts that can't be used, along with any excess water, move to the large intestine. Its job is to absorb the water and send the waste material out of the body. This process can take several days to complete. And we've reached the end of the line. The digestive system is the key to keeping us energized for our daily adventures, and it has its own way of letting us know if there's enough fuel in the tank. I guess it's probably time for me to grab a proper lunch. While I work on that, let's review everything we've learned today. The digestive system is responsible for digesting, or breaking down, and absorbing nutrients from food. Food enters the mouth, travels down the esophagus, and reaches the stomach. Then the small intestine absorbs nutrients, and the large intestine takes in water. Finally, waste materials are expelled from the body. To learn more about the digestive system, be sure to check out the practice questions and activities that go with this lesson. Providing your digestive system with the nourishment it needs keeps all your body systems operating smoothly. And those body systems are what make you, you. Whenever you can, try to maintain a balanced and nourishing diet to keep your body going strong. And remember, scientists, curiosity is the architect of discovery. See you next time. Hey.